things are really heating up and you need to be prepared for the potential for the United States of America to enter into a full blown war with Russia. Russia is threatening to unleash a full scale war in the region of eastern Ukraine. We are seeing video of armored personnel carriers moving toward potential conflict points fully armed and prepared for war. Drone footage is showing rows of tanks aligned by major roads and heavy artillery is being transported to the region by train. Videos of military movements had flooded uh, Russian social media outlets that we monitor for the past 72 hours with military researchers in the United States warning that the current administration, the Biden administration, has shared bread with Ukraine and has backed up their pledge to defend the region against Russia, a stance, according to strategists, that will lead to a conflict with the United States of America and Russia, both nuclear superpowers, both military superpowers that will exceed anything that has been seen in the past 60 years. You and your family need to get ready for the possibility that this is going to touch you in one way or another. Whether it's the economic fallout from what happens, the increased pressure on geopolitics, no matter what it is, this is going to affect you once that first shot in the next full war is fired. There will be no peaceful resolution claims one Russian source familiar with the operation and the military. Moscow, they say, is determined at this point to intervene militarily. Once that happens, researchers are warning all bets are off on how the United States will be moved by their recent packs into this volatile and extremely dangerous time. Need I remind you that we're following a cycle here. Pandemic, economic fallout, war. Pandemic, economy, war. This happens over and over again, and you can tie it back not just 100 years, but 600, 1,000 years deep. As soon as you have these types of things take place in the world, economic fallout and military action always come to pass in the near future. The defense minister to Ukraine warned Russia less than 24 hours ago that the country, backed by its powerful allies, and you know who they're talking about right there. They're not just talking about NATO. They're talking about pulling in the United States of America, will not back down, and that it, Russia, must, uh, must withdraw all of its troops from the border and cease all hostility toward the area. The actual goal of building up a military presence by the Russian Federation alongside the Ukrainian border, this is according to the defense minister, and uh, the temporarily occupied territory of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea, remember this is according to the Ukrainian defense minister, might be the increase of pressure on Ukraine for the purpose of forcing it to yield to Russia. The full military power of Russia is prepared to breach the border with a senior Kremlin official warning just a few hours ago that Russia would be ready to defend its citizens who are living in the country, who are living in eastern Ukraine. The Russian Federation is to understand that any activity, uh, any active aggression, an escalation in terms of uh, the security environment, this again is according to the Ukrainian defense minister, will lead to a clear and strong response from the international community, NATO, the United States of America. The most convincing and effective mechanism to present the firm, sustainable, and uncompromised position of the international community to Moscow's officials, particularly of the European and Euro-Atlantic countries, as their support for Ukraine continues. Ukraine last week announced that it will hold joint military drills with NATO following Russia's uh, military maneuvers. This is going to draw in the United States of America. You'll recently remember during the Syrian conflict that the United States and Russia traded blows, but those were proxy events. Those were proxy wars. They were uh, attacks against one another's nation, but through a proxy war. And what, what that means is there's no full out conflict. The United States of America, according to military researchers, according to regional research, will not have that same choice in Russian, uh, in a Russia-Ukraine conflict. The United States of America, NATO, will get pulled into its fullest. And that means that you and your family will have an effect from this. It might just be economic. You might see the prices that you think are, there, are high now 
double in price. It might just be shortages, a supply issue. You think it's hard to find something now, just wait until you have to wait two weeks for that item you've been looking for. No matter what it is, you will feel some fallout from this larger conflict. And remember, we're following a cycle here. Pandemic, economic fallout, military conflict. And this happens over and over again. The Kremlin spokesperson told reporters just 48 hours ago that Russia has the right to move its forces across its territory anywhere that it wants at its own discretion and was simply taking precautions given the dangerous and explosive region at its borders with eastern Ukraine, according to the Kremlin spokesperson. The spokesperson warned that the situation on the contact line was extremely unstable. We're going to get to here in a moment how you see the justification for entering into Ukraine and starting that war. Just like the United States uh, has to set up different lines of communication with members of Congress, has to uh, have some agreement there from larger legislators from the larger government to go to war in most cases so does russia and we're seeing those cards be played right now the spokesperson warned that the situation on the contact line was extremely unstable and said that the dynamics create the danger of a resumption of full-scale hostility Russian President Vladimir Putin uh, accused Ukraine of resuming dangerous provocative actions in its uh, one of its regions on a on a call on Friday with the Turkish President uh, Tayyip Erdogan. According to a readout from the Kremlin, tensions have continued to mount between Ukraine and pro-Russian separatists, again, this is their language, following a recent escalation of fighting along the demarcation line inside Ukraine where Kyiv said several of its soldiers were killed last week. The dep uh, deputy chief of staff of Russia's presidential executive office warned on Thursday that Moscow will be forced to defend its citizens living in Ukraine in the event of an all-out war and said this would be the beginning of the end of Ukraine. They are setting this up. It's going to happen one way or another today, tomorrow. It doesn't matter when it's going to happen. Russia has had its eyes set on Ukraine for so long. This is going to be a reabsorption type of conflict. And you and your family need to get ready for the fallout from this event. If the United States of America and NATO begin to support Ukraine and strike back, uh, Russia will certainly enter into a military conflict. That's one military analyst. Within the last 72 hours, the Russian government began laying out the justification for military intervention on humanitarian grounds. Uh, you know, just like uh, the United States goes in to um, uh, open up an area to uh, liberate that country. Same thing with Ru Russia. They're planning, their government is in alignment. They're going to liberate their people in Ukraine. So within the last 72 hours, the Russian government began laying out the legal justification for military intervention on humanitarian grounds, discussing the prospect of a new war in the region in some of the starkest and most open legislative terms yet. A Kremlin spokesperson said that Russia will intervene to prevent an ethnic cleansing of Russian speakers by the Ukrainian government, a risk that he compared to the ethnic massacres of the 1990s Balkans War. Though, we're just seeing the justification here, the legal justification. They're just going to find a reason, just like the U.S. said, hey, there's WMDs there, we got to go. Russia is going to see, uh, say, hey, there's ethnic cleansing happened, we've got to go in. We just can't not go in and do this. And what you need to be prepared for is not just to watch this from the sidelines, that all of the backdoor dealings, all of the other agreements that have been made, the allied agreements, will come to pass in this conflict. The situation on the contact line in Ukraine is extremely unstable. If military action begins and a potential repetition of a humanitarian uh, catastrophe similar to previous crisis events, not one country in the world will remain on the sidelines. All countries, including Russia, will take measures according to uh, military strategists on both sides here. You and your family need to get ready. And how can you get ready for this type of conflict? You need to be prepared for all of the secondary events, not the first events. We're not likely going to see a nuclear event take place, though that threat is always in existence, isn't it? Because you don't create a weapon without a plan to use it. You don't uh, you might not want to use it. Let's take a, an average firearms owner in the United States of America or anywhere in the world. The majority don't want to use that weapon. They don't want to have to, but they have it because, one, their enemies have a similar type of weapon, 
where two, they feel they need that superiority to control uh, something, some aspect, control security at their house. No matter what it is, our government has a nuclear weapon because they don't want to use it in most cases, but they are fully prepared to. They've set out the plans and they have those lines in the sand. They have their fingers not on, but always close to the trigger. You and your family need to get ready for the secondary events. If you have members in the military, you need to be prepared for that sort of call up to take place. But most of the United States of America will suffer a different effect. We will suffer an economic effect. We will suffer a supply shortage effect. And we need to plan for that right now. You think inflation is bad? Wait till full scale military conflict takes place. Do what you can with what you have and get as prepared as you possibly can. The time is now to get ready and you will never ever feel like you have wasted your time or your money because if you have extra rice to eat who cares if it's today or next month if you have uh, something that hedges inflation like you purchase some ammunition or you have livestock who cares if you need it today you've hedged that inflation and you are more prepared now for yourself and for your family than you ever have been before i don't care if you're shopping at the dollar store or if you're shopping online or if you're at a high end uh, paying double retail price i don't care where it is do what you can with what you have to get as prepared as you possibly can guys from my family to yours please stay safe remain vigilant and keep watch